Well, of course, uh, the news that uh, the former U.S. President Barack Obama has been chosen to deliver the 16th Nelson Mandela Annual Lecture has uh, received extensive coverage both in South Africa and the United States. Of course, uh, since Obama left office, he's channeled his energy into a number of projects and activities that are aimed at empowering youths around the globe. And we'll be getting uh, some more reaction from the U.S. We're going to be joined by our correspondent uh, in Washington, Harry Horton. Uh, we've had a number of people, of course, that give that lecture. And Harry, good evening to you. Uh, Barack Obama is going to, of course, uh, be the one to deliver that 16th lecture. I mean, how big a coup is this, particularly for the Nelson Mandela Foundation? Well, certainly uh, the former U.S. President Barack Obama, he has spoken uh, at many countries around the world since leaving office. But uh, people close to President Obama say that he views this as the most important speech uh, that he will give so far uh, since he left the White House. So that gives you an idea of how big it is in terms of Barack Obama's mind. We know that he, uh, as president, was somebody who admired Nelson Mandela greatly. He delivered a a eulogy shortly after Nelson Mandela's death in which Barack Obama said at the time, uh, he makes me want to be a better man. Uh, President Obama has also spoken about how he viewed Nelson Mandela as some sort of a beacon to him, how he inspired him into uh, political activism. It was during the apartheid era that uh, he uh, became active in politics, and it was Nelson Mandela who uh, inspired him to do so. So certainly Nelson Mandela, from Barack Obama's point of view, is a, a, an inspirational figure who shaped much of his life. Uh, and from people close to Barack Obama, they say he will write this speech personally. He'll write it himself, which is something uh, he didn't really have the time to do when he was in the White House. So so uh, I think uh, he's viewing this as a fairly uh, big deal, and it looks as though he will give it uh, quite a lot of uh, care and attention. Of course, it's going to be delivered on the eve of uh, the centennial of uh, Mandela's birth. And I want to ask you just, uh, I mean, the theme is about renewing the Mandela legacy, which has come under fire and some criticism here in South Africa. Why is this so important uh, to Barack Obama? Well, I think at, at, at a time, uh, especially in the United States, of such uh, political division uh, under the uh, Trump administration, where the country is, is so divided, when we see around the world uh, many nations uh, choosing to work on problems unilaterally and not try and solve problems together, when so many... Uh, big uh, uh, global agreements uh, are under pressure, uh, trade deals, the Iran nuclear deal, for example. Uh, you know, the, uh, the themes that Barack Obama, that, that he, he uh, pushed for during his presidency of people working together, of unity uh, and, and things like that, those are things that he holds dear to his heart. So uh, certainly those are themes that he will want to touch upon uh, as, as he tries to kind of set his legacy post-presidency. Both the Obama Foundation and uh, the Mandela Foundation were talking about how, of course, the former U.S. president was inspired by Madiba's the idea of creating uh, bridges, uh, uh, working across ideological lines. That's something that's needed both in South Africa and, as you say, in the U.S. How sorely missed is Barack Obama in U.S. public life? Well, among Democrats, he is greatly missed. Uh, I mean, you know, he was he was a hero to uh, to half of the country. Uh, certainly, the people who voted for him, they, uh, they they many people here in the United States worshipped Barack Obama, so they greatly miss him. I think among many other people, because the president who's followed Barack Obama, Donald Trump, because he has been so uh, uh, so different from what Barack Obama was like, his uh, tone in public, his rhetoric uh, could not be uh, more different from Barack Obama. You know, that has made some people long for Barack Obama even more. But certainly there are many critics of Barack Obama in the United States who are happy to see the back of him. Uh, there are many people, many African-Americans in the United States who feel that the... Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the promises and the hope that was espoused during Barack Obama's election campaign back in 2007, 2008, that his presidency failed to live up to that. So certainly among uh, those African-Americans, which you know, certainly aren't the majority, uh, they, they don't miss him, uh, you know, in, in any great way. So, you know, uh, he, he, he is missed by large portions of America, but uh, there are certainly uh, many people here in, in this country who are happy to see the back of him.
I wouldn't go so far as to say Nelson Mandela is not missed in South Africa, but certainly there are similar issues around his own legacy, the idea that uh, the democratic project hasn't delivered for the vast majority of South Africans the promises uh, it uh, set out in 1994. Perhaps in crafting his speech, Barack Obama will be aware of that particular challenge and perhaps will be able to defend uh, this uh, position of being an inclusive leader even when uh, people from your own support base might not agree. Yeah, absolutely. I think that will be one of the messages that he tries to get across. And another big point we should make here is that, you know, just prior to giving that speech, Barack Obama will be in South Africa uh, working with uh, his foundation where they will uh, be uh, holding the Obama Foundation's Africa Program Summit, uh, where 200 young people will convene for five days of uh, workshops uh, and classes where, they'll, where the Obama Foundation will hope to train these young people and, and, and help them be the uh, leaders of tomorrow, so political leaders, leaders in the private sector, uh, in civil society. So, uh, and that really is a, a key theme of, of what, a, what the uh, former President Barack Obama wants to focus on uh, now he's left the White House, is inspiring young people around the world, and in this instance, obviously, in South Africa, to be the people who can bring about change. So when people might be apathetic, who might rail against the system, instead of just complaining on social media or moaning about it to their friends, Barack Obama says, well, look, I'm going to train you and give you the tools to make the difference yourself. So that, I think, will be another uh, theme that he will touch upon, uh, both in, in terms of that workshop, but also in terms of his speech as well. You referred, of course, to that eulogy at uh, the memorial for Nelson Mandela. He was certainly warmly received then and uh, on his previous visit uh, as uh, the head of state in the U.S. What's been the reaction in America uh, to the fact that he's going to be coming to South Africa to deliver the speech? Well, one of the big reactions is contrasting uh, the efforts and attention that Barack Obama is giving towards South Africa and Africa as a whole uh, compared to what the current Trump administration is giving. I mean, it's quite noticeable that the Trump administration has been criticized for not having much of a policy towards Africa. Uh, in the State Department, there is still no permanent representative to deal with African affairs. And of course, famously, uh, there was those reported uh, discriminatory comments that Donald Trump made about African countries, for which he received widespread criticism uh, across Africa and, of course, here in the United States as well. So it's kind of put into sharp focus, if you like, the different approaches made by this current administration and the previous administration uh, that was led by Barack Obama. All right, uh, former President there, Barack Obama, will be joining an illustrious list of previous speakers, including Bill Clinton, Thabo Mbeki, and, of course, the former Liberian President, uh, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Uh, talking there, of course, uh, to Harry Horton uh, on the line from Washington.